we're going to be doing F equals MA problem number nine. Let me erase the little tail that came off here, because right now it looks like a 45 degree alpha. Yeah, so here's problem number nine. Basically, here's what it says. Now we have a sort of string which can extend itself. So they call it an elastic string that acts like a uh, ideal spring. Now I have no clue what elastic means, but uh, I'm assuming that it means it can change its length. So there are two masses hanging over here, M and M number two. Well, they have the same mass. And the pulley acts like an ideal spring with spring constant K and unstretched length L. So the question is, what is the length of this guy at equilibrium? Now you might be inclined to say L, but oh no, no, no. That's not going to work. Because L would be the correct answer if this was our situation. If this was our situation, L would be the correct answer. But now that we've added masses in, this string is going to stretch. These masses are going to pull it down. But by how much? Well, if we're talking equilibrium, then the upward force has to be equal to the downward force. Uh, well, the downward force has to be equal to the upward force, but same thing, main thing. So, x equals mg over k. Except, that's not really how we're going to traverse this. Why? Well, first, we have to find the spring constant. So, how can we treat this? Well, if this is a length L, and we basically ignore the pulley, let's make the pulley really small, so that we don't have to account for its length, then this, this length is L over two, well this length is also L over two. And here's the thing, when you cut a spring in half, then the uh, spring constant of each individual spring doubles. And uh, I'll show you right now why that's true. If you connect two springs in series, yes, you can connect them in series in parallel, kind of like resistors, and they use the same symbol too. Maybe springs are secretly resistors. Uh, so, if you have these two fellows right here, then uh, if one of them has a spring constant k and another has a spring constant k, the total k, or the total spring constant, is just going to be it's actually similar to how you can find equivalent resistance in a parallel circuit. One, well not similar, exactly the same. One over K1 plus one over K2 and all of that reciprocated. So it's one over one over K plus one over K, which is one over K over two, uh, not K over two, but two over K, which eventually becomes K over two. So that means that the total spring has half the spring constant of each individual spring. Or in other words, each individual spring has twice the spring constant of the whole spring. So that means that for each one, so for example, this match, how much is it going to stretch this part by? Well, it's going to be mz equals, well, k, in this case, is just going to be, uh, be 2 times the total constant, 2k. Or, oh, shoot. It's just going to be 2 times k, which is the spring constant of the whole thing. And then you have x. So then, that means x is mz over 2k. And we have an identical case on the other side. It's going to pull down the sp string, but not, well, spring, by mz over 2k as well because it's in the same circumstances. So that means that the total x is these displacements added together plus the unstretched length. So it becomes L, oh, uh, not equals, or L plus mz divided by k. That's the answer. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Do 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 do.
How much do I weigh? Oh well. Bye!